This team has the vibe of the old school. Its depth alone gives you a 1990s Denny Crum era feel. I could not be more hyped for this season. Now we've got fresh faces on the coaching staff. We've got eight new scholarship players. We've got an exciting new system on offense. Every great run in Louisville basketball history has been jump-started by a hugely positive season that the rest of the country never saw coming. Goes up for a jump shot. It's caught by Bridgman, who's six feet five. Goes down the lane and rattles the street lane. And oh, here we go. Oh! The Cardinals have won the national championship. Three on one. Alley oh, my goodness. This is like years ago. The doctors have done. Louisville somehow. After being down by 20, and they're heading for the Final Four. Louisville has won five in a row, the last three over ranked opponents. They were the aggressor, with the press, going inside, attacking. And for another one, it's Hancock again. And up ahead, to Siva. Oh. And the attack by Harrell, and just like that, Louisville completes the emotional journey to the championship. Once the preseason got here, we just kind of had to turn the page uh, in the book. You know, we had a very successful summer, I feel like, in all aspects. Um, on the court, I feel like we grew every single day, individually and collectively as a team. The competition level since I've been here has been very high. We've been getting after it, you know, multiple wings, multiple bigs, everybody's been competing. You see those games and, and the schedule creep near, um, everybody gets antsy and everybody wants those playing time. Just with knowing that the you know season's right around the corner, I think it's just a new excitement, a new pop, new energy within the group. The way that the coaches are starting to coach us now, you know, it's a different feel. We got to start including in, you know, different sets that other teams will run, you know, different systems and different scouting reports. So, you know, it's a different feeling. What we do is hard. What our guys do is hard. You know, everybody wants to play in the games and be in front of the fans and you know, sign the autographs and do the fun stuff. But there's some tough moments. You know, whether that's running sprints after practice, not making them and doing it again. We can't lower our standards. We can't lower our expectations. If we do, then, then what are we aspiring to be? You know, how good of a team do we want to be? So there's going to be some uncomfortable moments. You know, both for a coach, you know, and, and for players, and that's okay. You know, I think that's you know where you really learn about one another and you grow. Go over there. Come over here. If you're hurt, go over there. Speak up, man. That's it. Let's go. Hold yourself accountable. Come on, Sue. We're going down the back, buddy. We didn't do anything that we were supposed to do, all because we was out of shape, couldn't run the floor, couldn't run back on defense, and we're supposed to play fast? We're supposed to have pace and have tempo as a team? Everybody? You made every 33. That's great. But for you to bail out on us like that, bro, we a team, bro. We're going to suck some games like we did this weekend, and you're going to tap out on us like that? I understand. Everybody else got to hold themselves accountable, bro. But we need you, too. You got to keep going. Everybody got to see you keep going. Come on, man, we gotta be better. We all trying to win here, bro. We're talking back. Just listen, we're accepting. Understand, we're trying to help each other get better. The 
teams that'll be in New Orleans, the team that will ultimately win it all is going to be a player-led team. Practices were really entertaining and, and um, they, they have been since then. You know, guys want to win, they want to compete. Everything that we do in practice has a competitive component to it, a, a loser and a winner. And guys don't want to lose, you know, which is a really good thing. So I think they were well prepared to start the season. Yeah, I think having a player-led team is very important. And Coach Mack has actually made that very clear. He wants us to be a player-led team. He wants us to run our own team and control our team. You know, we got a, you know, a lot of veteran leadership. Uh, we got captains that hold guys accountable. Uh, we got great depth at every position. We got shooters, we got guys to defend. Uh, we got guys to get in there and rebound and guys that do a little bit of everything. We always got to have the goal in mind of making a tournament and, you know, winning our conference and making a deep, deep run in the NCAA tournament. But at the end of the day, you got to take it one game at a time. We can't, we can't be looking at February and we haven't got through November yet. So, um, you know, just looking forward to that next opponent and not looking past anybody. Coach Mack has done a great job of setting the standard for what he expects every day from all of us as players and coaches. So when he's gone, it shouldn't change. You know, the atmosphere, the energy, the standard, the expectation, it shouldn't change. This is a collaborative deal. You know, no one, including myself, is bigger than the program. You know, this is all about the guy next to you. And so uh, I'm really, really confident in Mike Pegues, you know, as a guy that's got a lot of valuable experiences to share with the team. And those may be different than my experiences. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing, it's a healthy thing. So, you know, Mike's gonna have a, a tremendous voice. There's a great respect for him and our entire coaching staff. So, although I'm gonna miss being on the sidelines and working with our guys every day, uh, I have no hesitancy on our staff. And we'll have some success throughout the month of November and hopefully give this thing back to Coach 6-0. We're underrated, as so to say, and we have a lot of underrated guys, you know, with that mentality. Um, that could lead to a scary year, and I don't really see a, a, a tab that, you know, we can't reach this year. You know, I don't mind being underdog or stuff on a little bit. I feel like that's part of my story, you know, part of what I'm used to, you know. I know Louisville was not used to that, but uh, I feel like that's kind of what I'm used to, and uh, I like to prove people wrong. I'm excited for the challenge. I'll put it like that. You know, if people aren't looking at us that closely, and that's fine. There are countless preseason college basketball rankings that come out as we get set for another season. And I have not seen a single one mention Louisville at all. It's not that I've seen people predict that they're going to be a bad team. I just don't think they're on anybody's radar right now. And now that I've seen them play, I think that changes once we get this season started. There's a lot to like about this roster that Chris Mack has put together. He's got depth, a lot of experience, guys that have transferred in after playing college basketball at a high level for many years. He's got shooters. In most cases, there's gonna be four, sometimes even five guys on the floor that you feel good about taking a three-point shot if it's a good look. I think a lot of people are sleeping on this Louisville team.